All right, guys, welcome to another Sailing Doodles podcast. Uh, this one's a little different than most. I don't really have much planned out or I'm just, well, I have something planned out, but normally I don't really have a script, but I have kind of talking points that I want to get across. Sometimes I have notes on my computer. This one, okay, so we just got back from Thailand. The videos haven't come out yet because we're about three to four weeks behind. So with the videos that come, come out, you're seeing right now, like I'm editing, uploading one right now is filmed October 25th. So the video that comes out, well, in a few hours here, to patrons anyway, um, uh, will be, was filmed October 25th. Uh, October 28th, we left the Bahamas and we went to Thailand. And we filmed in Thailand for, uh, we were there about three weeks, but we only filmed maybe 10 days. We were on a, on a sailboat cruising around there. Um, and so that video, those videos will be coming out. So this is the, the next, the video that came out today was October 25th. So then there's one more on the 26th. And then there's the video for the 27th and 28th. So there's two more videos. So that'll be one more week after that video, after the 20, after the video that came out just today. Uh, and then the Thailand videos will start, um, including new information about my new Island Spirit 525. That was the whole reason we went there to get some more video of that. If you are interested in the Island Spirit 525, there's a link down below uh, in the comments section or in the description, um, or uh, you can just search for it, so Island Spirit 525E and uh, you can probably find it on the Navigar um, yachting website. And uh, I would say that if you do look that boat up, please let them know that you saw it on Sailing Noodles. I obviously, it's kind of a referral type thing. So uh, very been helpful to me, I really appreciate it. Um, anyway, so that's why we went to Thailand. And so it is now five in the morning and of course I'm jet lagged so I can't sleep. So I thought, I mean, I haven't really unpacked yet. So I thought I would give you guys kind of a rundown of all the crap that I have to take with me. Um, so first I'll show you all the bags here. So if you're just listening to this, I've got, I have to carry three bags. Um, one is this backpack. It's quite a large backpack. Um, and actually, um, so I'll source all my camera gear, uh, the drone, all the, I'll go through it and show you the, the, the stuff inside it here in a little bit. And here's my laptop and a Bluetooth speaker and all that stuff. So it's this one big backpack. I mean, there's like $20,000 worth of gear in this bag when it's fully packed. And so uh, I really don't want to check it. So I don't check it. Uh, although there was one flight this time that it fits just fine in a, in a um, you know, the overhead bin, uh, but it is a bit heavy. Um, I think we were on a, on a small ATR. And so they had a max hand luggage thing of like, 15 pounds and this thing weighs like 30 pounds there was no way and so they made me gate check it and i'm like look guys i mean <laughs> it's like twenty thousand dollars of equipment in here plus it's very fragile and they wouldn't listen to me and i'm like i've been on this kind of airplane anyway so i had to hand check it luckily everything was just fine so no problems there um so there's that bag and then we have to carry oh by the way i'll just give you a little shot here i'm in my mom's place for for christmas she's got it pretty well decorated um, I say Christmas, but I'm Christmas, but I meant Thanksgiving, but obviously she's a little ahead of times, but yeah, anyway, it's a real, it's a really nice place. She just had it remodeled. So yeah, uh, she's very proud of it and it does look great. Ah, I'm knocking over Christmas trees here though. Uh, and I've got, when I'm here, this is my little desk and edi uh, s s editing studio. So I've got my laptop here. I'll show you all this stuff in a minute. I'll kind of go over more detail, some of that stuff. But this is another bag we carry with us. This is our star, my Starlink. Let me get, it's kind of backlit there. Um, so I have to carry that around. It's a, so it's, if you're just listening, it's a hard shell backpack that's, uh, I don't know, probably two and a half, yeah, two feet tall, foot, 18 inches wide, something like that. It's not too heavy. It's only about maybe 20 pounds, but that lets us get internet, you know, um, basically wherever we are. So I have to travel with that. And then, so that's just gear so far. And then this is my personal bag. It's just a little duffel bag. And um, uh, so all my, it's got two sides to it. It's got a top side here. That's just clothes and everything. And then down here, I got like, you know, a hammock and the ropes for the hammock and shoes. And then I actually keep more um, like extension cords, uh, selfie sticks, you know, clamps, all that kind of thing down in there. Uh, and that's not everything that I keep in there. I also keep, well, the tripod that I'm using this on right now. Um, and then this guy right here, this is, if you're wondering how we get the 360 shots, 
Uh, this is a three meter, so it extends way out there. And that's how I hook up the 360 camera on there and get some shots for that. Uh, so I have to carry around these three bags. Plus I carry this guy right here, uh, underwater camera housing. So, um, you know, these, it, uh, these kind of come out on the sides. I do that. And then, uh, It's got a dome port on the front, and it's so I put keep the pl plastic protection on there to keep it from getting scratched. Um, and then uh, so I put my nice camera. This is not my nice camera that I'm filming this on right now. This is my Sony Z1 Mark II, um, but I wanted to be able to show you my nice camera, so that's why I'm filming on that one. And then so I put I will put my nice camera on that one, put a different lens on it, and put it in here. And it that's what gets some really good underwater shots. GoPro is just they just uh, GoPros are good for what action sports and stuff like that but you know and if you're gonna go uh, some you know we'll use the gopro when we're snorkeling if, if need be um if it's just super easy want to jump in the water real quick we'll grab a gopro but for any kind of like diving for sure or any kind of snorkeling that we really want to get some good shots i use this thing uh so i have to carry you know three bags plus that thing is my personal item and so it's just a lot to carry around and, and travel with so when we're traveling to all these places which we've been doing so we went uh, we went to the bahamas and then we went to fort lauderdale for the boat show and then we went to uh, what then we flew to uh thailand and we went to we flew into bangkok got in a van went down to a hotel in kochong stayed in the hotel for two nights and then we went got on a boat for seven nights in kochong also and then we got off the boat and went to pattaya stayed there for two nights and then flew from there to Phuket for five nights and then flew from there to Bangkok for two nights and then back here. So living out of these suitcases and hauling all this stuff around is, you know, number one, it's, it's, it's not easy. Number two, it's expensive. I mean, you got all these bags and everything, but anyway, so I wanted to show you some of the gear since I've still got it all packed up. Um, so I'll show you this. Okay. This part of this is new. Um, this is, let me turn it on. This is my Sony a7S III, um, and, and this part, this Ronin uh, gimbal is new. I just got that. I, got, I unboxed it today, um, and I've been noticing in our footage lately that it's been pretty choppy, and so I was like, you know what? I'm just going to, because these things have come down to so much pressure. I used to use a gimbal. But that was when the automation or the stabilization on these cameras wasn't so good. The stabilization on these cameras is actually the in-body and in and lens stuff is pretty good, but it's still not the same as a gimbal. And I noticed it's been a little choppy lately. So I've decided I'm gonna give this a shot again. It is a pain because it's just extra weight. So you know, if you're pulling that holding that out here doing selfie, you can see real quick how your arm's gonna be, you know. I, so basically I've got my whole arm extended and then I've got so I think the camera itself is 3.3 pounds and this is almost two pounds. So it's five and a half pounds, which doesn't sound much, you know, so six pounds all together, but holding it out at arm's length for any amount of time um, gets a little stressful. So I don't know, we'll see how it goes. I don't know how much I'll use this, but these things have come down way a lot in price lately. So the gimbal is about, let's say $400 these days. They used to be a 700 or a thousand and that was for the cheap ones. Um, the GJIs have always been more expensive, but it's kind of nice that, you know, we'll see how, how much this, how much this works and how easy it is. But, um, and then, so this is the Sony a7S III with the 16 to 34, 35 millimeter, uh, G master lens F 1. No, 2.8. Um, so this camera and lens, it lenses $2,000 cameras, 3000. And then the microphone is $500. This is the um, Sony proprietary microphone, but the dead cat that comes with it is not very good. The dead cat is this wind guard. One that comes with it is not very good. So I actually custom made this one. I don't really want to take it off. Let me try it. I don't want to, I don't know. I don't want to mess with like, okay. Anyway, so you can see there's the microphone. And then this is just a wind muff that I custom made um, because the one that comes with it just wasn't cutting it, but, uh, it's pretty nice having to, uh, I mean, like I've been in 25 knots of wind and you can't even hear the wind with this thing. So it's pretty nice. But so I have to carry, this is the primary camera. Um, 
And then, uh, you know what, I'll tell you what, let me turn on this camera. It's kind of nice, I've got it where I've got, uh, I can select record from the thing. So anyway, so this camera here, and I've noticed the color is a lot different on this. It's much more yellow on this camera. I need to maybe adjust the settings so that um, the, the cameras match a little better. But anyway, um, that camera you're seeing right now is the Sony Z1 Mark II. Uh, and then I'll kind of, uh, so it is, I like it because it's, kind of easy and portable to use uh you know it, it's lightweight it works pretty well it only does 4k and 30 frames per second whereas this will will do 60 i might even do 120 frames a second i'm not sure but i normally film at 60 frames a second and the reason i do that is because if i want to slow something down like half speed that means the half speed is still 30 frames a second so um uh it uh it still looks nice and smooth in your on the video and then, so, so I have the, the microphone on the dead cat here, the Sony proprietary one that goes with it. So it's, the good thing about that is that uh, I don't have to run an audio cord from the mic to the camera. It just goes through the hot shoe, which is great. So don't have to worry about like camera like cords because a lot of times I'll see here. So I've got the one on there on this Z1. A lot of times you won't notice it and you'll bang one of those cords out and then, you know, it, then you lose your audio. So it's kind of nice not having to worry about it with the hot shoe. And so what I am talking into that is uh, I've got the DJI mic system. So you can see here it's a wireless mic. It comes with a pair of two and it is really nice uh, for picking up audio. Okay, if we're gonna have just two people, it's nice. You just plug this thing in, hook that up to the camera and you don't have to worry about if you're getting good audio, like if you're close enough to the microphone or something like that. But you know, when we have like three or four people on the boat, I always use that just so we can get audio from everybody instead of just incidentally. Um, so uh, let's see here, how do I wanna do this? So I used to use, before I before, um, started using this, gim this gimbal setup, I was using what is on uh, that, the Sony Z1 right there is this Joby 5K uh, Gorillapod. And you can kind of put that any way you want. And I've been using that lately because, let me show you what I was using before then. Uh, I, bef I, I used the, the Gorillapod originally. And then for a while I was using this cage. Um, so you hook up this cage around that camera and then you can kind of hold it with two hands. You can, well, I don't have it hooked up. Let me just hook it up real quick. Um, you can, one second, sorry. Uh, you can hold it one hand, you can hold it with two hands going like that. And the only problem is, is you're a bit more shaky because you're holding it, you know, very inward. So everything just got really shaky and I was like, okay, that's not good. So I went back to the Gorilla Pod for the stuff in the Bahamas and I've noticed it's better, but it's still a little shaky. And I'm like, you know what? Let me just go back to try using a gimbal again and see how well that works. Uh, so for filming, that's most of what we use. Uh, let me show you my backpack here. Um, so the, uh, the backpack unzips from the inside, which is really nice. So nobody can like open it while you're walking around. And then all my camera gear is in here. So um, I keep my main Sony camera right here. This is another lens for that camera, which is this 24 millimeter. It is a G Master. Uh, this, and it's a, uh, what, F1.4. So this lens is so good for low light. Like, it can see way better than you can in low light. So I use that one at nighttime when I think so. I think we need it. And then I've got some ND filters um, right next to that. These are for the drone right here. Uh, it, uh, ND filters basically, um, yeah, there we go. So ND filters, I can, I can replace the front cover on the drone. And it just basically blocks out some of the light going into the lens so that you can open the aperture more and get better um, shots. This is uh, an ND filter for my main camera. I use that sometimes, uh, but lately a lot. Over on this pocket right here is the drone batteries and the drone controller. Uh, 
And then in this side is where I keep the DJI mic system, which I'm using right now. So you can see there's a couple components out of there. Um, flashlight in here um, if we need it. And then these are my two Insta360 um, 360 cameras. And then uh, I also keep, where'd it go? Oh, normally it goes in there as well, is a GoPro. This is an 11 but I've got a bunch of 12s, but that's for my flying doodle show. In this pocket, I have just a ton of batteries, right? All the different batteries for different things go in there and the battery charging cages. Uh, this right here, I'm um, just cables, right? Um, any, any kind of USB cable you think you could need, there you go. This is a card reader um, uh, because we use the uh, um, SF, uh, CF Express, which is like super high, fast speed. Um, you know, it's like 700, 800 megabits a second. This is our tracker. So um, patrons get access to our tracker so you can see where we've been around the world. Uh, and then next to it in this pocket um, is the drone. It is a Mavic 3. Uh, so that fits in there. And then down here is where I just keep microphones. So this is the normal microphone for this camera that's on right now. And then I, of course, keep this mic in there, this mic in there. Uh, and then I also roll up this mouse pad and the mouse and just jam it in there somewhere. Uh, and then, sorry. Um, so that is the backside of the camera bag. And then on the front side, uh, it's got another pouch here. Oh, here's my neck pillow for, you know, the long flights. Uh, on the other side is uh, I just stuffed my laptop down in there and then the battery in there and then also a little Bluetooth speaker. Um, and yeah, so that is my backpack. And so that just weighs a lot and it's a lot of stuff to carry around. Um, but that's why I'm, I'm kind of getting burned out on all this travel. I mean. Uh, I love going to these places in the Bahamas and, and, and uh, Thailand and all that, but you know, my new boats now, I'm not sure when it'll be ready uh, in the spring sometime, but then they've got to do the testing on it and then get it to the US, which I mean, so it's going to be May, June, July before I get that boat. So in the meantime, I have bought another boat, but I've still got so much travel to do. Uh, so I bought a boat in Florida just a 34 foot Sea Ray for $50,000. Gonna take it to the Florida Keys and then the Bahamas. So gonna leave here a week from Monday and go to that boat, get on the Florida Keys, get to Fort Lauderdale before Christmas, go home for Christmas, probably come back to the boat uh, and go into the Bahamas and then leave the boat somewhere in the Bahamas for a week or two while I go to uh, to the BVI for the next flotilla, which is the end of January. Uh, I should be announcing that on Monday or Tuesday. Uh, for patrons and channel members, we'll get the first link. They can sign up first, but we have eight boats reserved in the BVI. And then, so fly to the BVI for eight days, basically, to do that. Uh, and then back to the boat in the Bahamas, cruise around the Bahamas until mid-April. Um, so that'll be my, I'm looking forward to that. But also, who knows if I actually get to do that because my new boat should be splashed either late January or sometime in February. And I guess I need to, I would need to go back to Thailand to kind of splash the boat and be there to film all that. So, which is just such a long flight to get there. Uh, so going for like two weeks, I don't know, I, you know, got to do what I got to do. So then get back. So probably after the BBI, I might go to Thailand for a couple weeks, do that, then back to the boat in the, in, in, uh, the Bahamas, cruise around for another month or two. I, I do want to fly back to the U.S. Um, for the uh, uh, eclipse in mid-April, um, but I'll probably just do a week trip that. I'll just leave the boat in the Bahamas while I fly home for a week, get in the RV, go do that, and then go back to the boat, and then cruise around the Bahamas until June-ish or something like that, and then... Um, uh, basically, uh, I don't know at that point, hopefully my new boat is being delivered somewhere on the East coast. Uh, and so I'll get on the new boat and probably cruise the Chesapeake or the Northeast or somewhere while I'm wait waiting for, for hurricane season to end. Uh, and at, at some point, May or June, I'll probably sell this Sea Ray or I will sell the Sea Ray because I'll need the money for it. Uh, but so if anybody's interested, I've actually got a couple of people that have contacted me about it. Mm. 
Oh, let me show you uh, this uh, laptop I have here. And because it's kind of cool. Uh, okay, I just finished uploading this video. Let me uh, let me just click out of it every, real quick. Um, I just bought this one because about every two years, number one, you need to get a new laptop anyway because you know to keep up with technology, right? You know, you're using higher quality footage, and so you need to. I mean, you basically need to update, you know, uh, your your computer to be able to edit that stuff because, you know, now we're editing in 4K, 60 frames a second, which is a lot of data. I don't know if you know how much that is, but it's a lot. And so, you know, we'll have several clips open at a time. I mean, well, the whole, each video ends up being about, uh, well, 50 minutes to an hour of raw footage. And so you know that much raw footage open that's probably 65 70 gigs worth of footage open and so to have all that open uh on your computer so i have 65 gigs of ram on here uh and then you know i got a four terabyte solid state drive and then i've got two displays so it's really cool uh let me oh no really uh of course now it is having a problem when i'm trying to launch it but uh, it's really nice, has two displays because, uh, let me just open up uh, this one here. All right, uh, because editing out of a laptop sucks. Number one, you don't have enough cooling um, because you know the fans and everything are a lot smaller. You get a desktop, you can actually use proper cooling to make your processor run faster. And then also you're limited on your monitor size or you're limited to one monitor. When I get the new boat, I'm really looking forward to having multiple monitors, monitors and a desktop. Like a, you know, I'm gonna have a dedicated office and all that, so I can do all that instead of like my mom's kitchen counter. Uh, but here's the, com the computer. Uh, it's nice because I have this second um, screen down here, so I can put the timeline when I'm editing here. So I don't know if you can see all the timeline here. So uh, you've got you sp it's split between your video channels and your audio channels, and then you have different layers on top. So then, you know, you've got, uh, you know, down, uh, down here, I've got, you know, my voiceover, then I've got the music, then I've got the audio track for the, that's connected to the video track. And then, you know, then there's uh, color correction and then there's graphics on top. And then, you know, sometimes there's, you know, other, uh, you know, just it, it, this one is pretty, uh, <laughs> let me, let me, let me open up uh, one of these um, uh, flying doodles videos and you can see just how many more layers there can be. Uh, Cause I've got to actually, as soon as I finish uploading or working on this podcast here, I've got to edit another flying doodles getting with um, Dakota later today. And we are going to uh, uh, film some more flying doodles that she'll be editing. She's actually already edited too. So uh, it's kind of nice having somebody take that over. But, uh, all right, here is, well, I've already edited this down quite a bit, so it's not that hard, but, well, yeah. but you can see I've got four video. Oh, this one actually is pretty, let me open up an older one, because uh, this one is not, uh, just in the very beginning stages of editing, so we can get one that's fully edited, and you can see just how many cuts and everything there are on these and how much effort it takes to F edit one of these Flying Doodles videos. Uh, project files. Uh, we're gonna go to final. Serious final project. Um, and it's just so many, so much stuff going on on the on these videos. Uh, it, it's just okay. This is the final project, but I've actually re-edited some of it. So you can see just all the different cuts and everything there. But let me I may have to edit this podcast. I hate having to do that, but uh, let's see here. Serious flight. Here we go. And you can see just how many cuts there are on this video. Uh, I, I try to do these podcasts like as cut as little as possible, just it makes it easier to edit. Uh, so maybe I'll just leave this in. You can see what my workflow, my workflow really is. But I mean, okay, this is just look how many cuts there are and how many files are open. So all these right here, just everywhere you see like a little dark line or a line moved up and down, it's a cut and that's a different scene going back and forth. So it's just so much. Anyway, so if you haven't checked out Flying Doodles, check that out, um, Flying Doodles on YouTube. It has almost 100,000 subscribers now. Hey, help us get to 100,000. That'd be great. Um, all right, well, I think my camera battery on this camera is about to die. I probably, um, 
I probably should have. Uh, I mean, it said it was full, but this little Sony Z1, the batteries, I guess I do have to edit because I have to put uh, stuff on there. Anyway, these little batteries are really tiny, so it makes it really nice for just, you know, being low key traveling. Um, and I've got the, um, got the, uh, so I don't normally use that uh, um, tripod with it. I normally just use this one. So it's just a lot smaller. And so with that tiny little camera on there, um, it's a lot less intrusive. So like if I walk into a restaurant or something somewhere, like it's people aren't like, what is this guy doing carrying around this thing? Cause when you walk into a restaurant with this, people are like, okay, what's going on here? But anyway, you walk around with that little camera and it's a lot less intrusive, but it's what it is. But anyway, I'm gonna wrap this one up. Um, guys, thank you. Please click that like and subscribe. Uh, if you'd like to help the channel out, you can go to patreon.com slash sailing doodles or become a channel member. I don't really have memberships on the, on the, uh, uh, podcast channel but you know hey all right guys uh thanks for watching and we'll see you on the next video